Hey, what is up everyone? Welcome back to another Gunpla Review and today I'm taking a look at the high grade after colony Gundam Heavy Arms and of course this right here is from new mobile report Gundam Wing. Without a single doubt, this mobile suit right here is a massive fan favorite and for good reason. It's so iconic looking. The colors are very unique, the amount of weapons where the weapons are, that beam gatling arm, it's just such a cool mobile suit. But anyway, if you do want one of your own, you can get yours down there in that link in the description through Hobby Link Japan with 5% off. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to stay up to date with all the best Gunpla releases. Now here we go. So anyway, that right there is the high grade after colony Gundam heavy arms snapped together with a little bit of extra effort. That extra effort is some panel lining as well as removing the safety knobs off of the V-fin. And speaking about all of that, well, this right here is what it will look like with no extra effort whatsoever. There's no denying that it does look a little bit on the lackluster side. So the out of box build here is a little plain and lacking a lot of detail that I would have liked to see. There is a bit of a obvious seam line up the front of the leg as well, but on the whole it's still a nice looking kit, but I highly recommend panel lining this to bring out all of that hidden detail. As for what this kit right here is made up of, we've got 8 runners in total as well as some polycaps. Three of these runners are reused from the 2019 version of the high grade Gundam Sandrock. These are just for the inner frame and all of the colored parts, armor, etc. are brand new for the heavy arms right here. The polycaps are from 2013 so they've been around for a while. And as for those stickers, we do have quite a few, which is definitely a letdown and a lot of different colors as well. The ones that kill me the most are those blue ones around the chest because everything else I could kind of forget about, but the chest just looks so bare without those ones. So anyway, jumping right on in with that full 360 degree spin and all I can say is this does look awesome. I'll pop up the image of the actual art of this particular mobile suit right beside it so you can see just how accurate it is. Maybe I've been looking at the Kotoki version so much with all the different variants of the Master Grey that has been released that it is so nice to see the TV version done so well. This is an extremely nice looking kit and very accurate to the original design. Once again, of course, the only real letdown is some of the lack of color separation here and there. And the main ones that stand out are the ones on the chest because it's so central to what you'll be looking at most of the time on the mobile suit. So, of course, that is the two blue arrows on the chest and the yellow sections on the lower part of the chest. It would have been nice to see at least those color accurate, but still, it does look awesome. In general, I'm not a huge fan of stickers, but I'm going to try them out this time around just to see what it will look like because for a lot of builders, this is what you're going to use. So let's give it a go. So as I expected, the blue ones from the chest are very hard to lay down on that raised pattern. So in the end, you get something that looks a bit like this. Once again, not the worst, but definitely not optimal. It's such an integral part of this mobile suit that I really wish they put some effort into color separating that. The yellow sections down below don't look so bad with those yellow stickers. They lay quite well, but on the whole, from a distance, it won't look that bad, but you'll always be wishing those parts were in color separated blue plastic. As for the rest of those stickers, the only ones worth noting are those grey ones over there which are 14 and 15. Those go on the lower sections of the knees, those little thrusters, as well as up on the machine cannons, either side of the head, up on the torso. Once again, these aren't the worst, they're just meant to be in grey, but hey, they're simple enough to paint. So now moving on to a couple of size comparisons, there it is, side by side with last year's high grade Gundam Sandrock. Beside a standard size Gundam, which of course is the high grade revived version of the Oryx 78 II, and there it is side by side with the master grade version of Heavy Arms. Of course, this is the Katoki redesign from Endless Waltz, not the TV version like this one. Of course, this right here would not be Gundam Heavy Arms without its signature opening hatches. So we've got some down in the legs which reveals those absolutely awesome micro missiles. I will mention these are not color accurate, they're meant to be white. The orange armor panels up on the shoulders open up to reveal those homing missiles. And of course, coolest of all is the opening chest with those massive Gatlings inside. There's a reason this mobile suit right here is so popular and that is because it just loads so much armaments into the actual mobile suit itself. This thing looks spectacular. And just in case that isn't enough, it's also got a knife round on the back of its arm. So moving on to the accessories and here is the high grade heavy arms with absolutely everything that it comes with. 
And sure, this may not look like a whole lot, and it isn't a whole lot, but when you consider just how much ammo is loaded into the mobile suit itself, you can't really ask for more. Well, what else do the heavy arms have? So what we get in here is the Beam Gatling, an adapter for the Beam Gatling, an extra pair of dynamic wide open hands, the pair of standard holding hands you would have seen already, and these ones right here which are essentially leftovers from the Gundam Sandrock. So as for hands, once again, we do have a pair of fists and a pair of widespread open hands which is always a very nice extra with a high grade kit. We also have a pair of leftover Sandrock holding hands which of course you could use for holding some of Sandrock's weapons, but besides that you can always have them posed, doing a nice, friendly thumbs up. As for swapping the hands, it's the usual situation, these are just ball joints, pop them out, pop them back in again, simple as. So next up in here then of course is the main event itself, that Beam Gatling Gun. And this is that classic style arm-mounted Beam Gatling Gun that we all know and love. Not that one that has to be held and kind of held wonkily like with the Master Grade Endless Waltz one. This is the fully arm-mounted one and I love it. Attaching this is very simple, you just pop off the hand and attach this on. It doesn't click in or anything like that, it just slides on and holds nice and tight. On the inside side of this we've got this flip out handle which can be held in the other hand just like you're seeing right now and I guess this is for more precise shooting but hey this right here is troll we're talking about we don't want to see him taking nicely aimed calm pot shots we want to see him flipping through the air shooting all over the place all of the time so I'm never going to use that this right here this is more what I'm talking about. Sadly, however, there is no removable arm gimmick in this particular kit with a beam saber hidden inside, but we do have a small little adapter which attaches on here, which allows this to be stored around on the backpack. And in case you're wondering if the Gatling can be put on either or arm, it cannot because this arm right here has little slots for it to attach onto and this arm back here has that knife. So they are not exactly the same which means you can't switch it from arm to arm straight out of box. So now moving on to the articulation and as for a comment on the build, this is very solid. There is no loose parts in which to speak of whatsoever, so that is extremely nice. You may be at risk of losing a vernier if you're not careful, but besides that, it's solid as a rock. Now, from the head down. The neck here is just a generic giggity, giggity, giggity goo polycap, so it does what you'd expect. There's the head all the way up. There is the head all the way down, so very nice. Side to side pivot, and that can spin all the way around. Shoulder is your normal polycap that is aligned to move forward just like this and back in like so. Ball and socket shoulder which does what you would expect a ball and socket to do so that is that rotation. There's it all the way to the front, all the way to the back and that full spin all the way around. The arm can also move inside of the shoulder armor, but because that is a little bit limited, the arm raise is not the greatest. That's as high as it will go without flipping the armor around and, well, doing that looks silly. Full 360 spin at the upper arm. We've got a two-point bend at the elbow, which gets us, well, pretty much everything. I will mention there are some pretty wicked seams in this kit, like in this forearm right here down on the shins as well that you may want to close up. The wrist here is a standard ball joint which is a little bit on the loose side but this kit doesn't really carry weapons so that doesn't really matter. The torso itself doesn't really do much at all but we do have that cool joint in here we would have seen with the sand rock which allows this whole segment in here to tilt forward so that makes up for the lack of an ab crunch. So that does allow heavy arms to tilt forward just like this which is very very nice. Mix that with the fact that you've got a swinging forward waist joint inside there. That means those legs can kick forward like this. So you do get a lot of what I can only describe as a pseudo crunch, but that's a lot of motion. It is a standard ball joint in there. So we've got a lot of wiggle, full rotation. Standard ball joint, front skirting armor. There it is all the way up. Gets a little bit blocked unless you move them. These are attached in the runners so you can snip them apart too let them move independently. The side skirt is on one of those generic side skirting polycaps so it can swing forward like so, back like this and has a little bit of up and down. Heavy Arms is also rocking a premium butt flap which is always nice to see. It can move up like this, down like this and is kind of part of the whole bending forward at the waist gimmick. So that's pretty awesome right there. 
So next up, as for those kicks, there's the kick all the way up to the front, so that is very, very nice. Swinging that round to the back with that butt flap kicking out, we also get a nice kick out to the back. We'd all assume the heavy arms can do the splits, and yes, it can. Full rotation at the upper leg, but we do have a bit of a lip at the front of the armor, which will block it if it is in close. A two-point bend at the knee, so that is all we get. It could be a little nicer, but it is okay. Exactly the same as the sand rock, no surprise. The ankle armor is attached into the ankle right there. That can move around like so, up and down like that. We have three points of motion to the ankle. We've got flexion and extension ever so slightly inside here. We've got a ball joint for the foot and a side-to-side -side pivot on top of that ball joint. Just like with sand rock, we also have a downward pointing toe as well as a upward motion to that as well, which is always a plus. So that means when it comes to ground poses, we've got a healthy dose of this all the way to the front without lifting that foot off the ground, then this all the way out to the back, which is okay, and then side to side, which is very, very nice. So as for the high-grade heavy arms, the articulation is definitely above average. It's not crazy, but it is very, very nice. The only real downside is the fact that the arms can't raise very high, but personally, I do prefer the fact that they kept the design intact over giving you some extra articulation right there. On the whole though, pretty awesome. So anyway, that right there is it for my review of the high-grade After Colony Gundam Heavy Arms. So for me, this right here is gold tier, but you can take that with a hefty dose of nostalgic bias. Basically, I'd say is if you don't really care for Gundam Wing at all, I'd say it's silver tier. If you do love Gundam Wing, I would say it is gold tier. And the reason I say it is gold tier is because last year I gave Sandrock gold tier, and this is exactly the same in essence as that kit. By modern standards though, I'm not sure if I would still say it is or not. But I'm sure at this point you've made up your decision or not whether you like this kit. Anyway, it is very nice, it's got great articulation, could raise its arms a little bit higher though. It looks fantastic, but out of box, it is a little on the plain side, so you will need to do a little bit of lining, maybe paint that section on the chest. That, to me, is one of the biggest down points. But if you do love classic Gundam wing designs, you cannot go wrong with this right here. And as always, if you do want one of your own, there is a link down there in the description, and you can get yours at Hobby Link Japan. As always, thank you so, so much for watching. Make sure to come back for more Gunpla reviews, and I will see you next time. Once again, I cannot finish this video right here without thanking each and every one of you guys. Whether you just watch my videos, like them, or support the channel on the channel memberships and over on Patreon. Like Craig Jerry, Greg Humphrey, Kaiser721, Tyler Sanders, Caleb Engelhardt, Sean T, and the Ambassador for Asymmetric Cat.